Okay. Uh, some of the questions. A lot of you asked questions. I got a lot of uh, networking questions on this one. So, so if some of you were wanting to get the networking things, a lot of them were the Network Plus uh, questions that came in. Obviously, I'll be covering those next week. So very useful to have that. Oh, which software do I recommend? Uh, Parallels or VirtualBox? Or, um, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. I've been using VirtualBox for a while, um, and it's worked great. Um, because it's free and it does everything I need it to do. The and it and it's supportable. It supports many different drive types. So I could take those drives, move them over to something else later if I want to. Um I one of the things I don't have in VirtualBox is a BIOS. And a lot of the things in A plus you need to understand the BIOS, at least what it feels like. If you don't have your own computer, it would be nice to to emulate that. And so uh, the VMware workstation and and things like uh, like parallels will do that. Um, um, I have on my device, on my machine here. Um, uh, I'm running uh, VMware Fusion, so I can run it on my desktop and run other operating systems as well. Um, so it, it, as long as it does what you need it to do, and for me the BIOS was useful, so it was nice to load the VMware piece. Um, and that, 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 to me, I think is the most important part. Either one works really well. Uh, really don't have a problem. Uh, sometimes people will find that VirtualBox is a little bit wonky with their particular setup. I think one of the advantages of using the VMware devices is that it's a much larger organization. They put a lot more emphasis into doing the virtualization they've been doing in a much longer time frame. Um, that, that's the part that I think is, is pretty useful. Uh, so you may find, you go with VMware, you're great. Um, I don't care either way, as long as it works for you. That's the important part. Very, very useful. Um, uh, can I do some Linux study groups? Uh, gosh, that's, I'm already out of time. I'm doing A plus and network plus. There's, there's only so much time in the day and uh, it takes, takes a bit of prep to get one of these things going. So no plans immediately for any additional study groups. I would love to do more study groups. I would love to do live events every day of different multiple kinds doing different things. I think that would be awesome. Um, I just don't have time. I have a full-time job. This is what I do on the weekend. So it uh, becomes a little more complicated because uh, if I'm doing one of these, you're not getting any videos done, are you? So <laughs> there's no more videos getting produced. Uh, I'm only one guy. So that becomes a little bit more of a, of a challenge. Um, that's that's the piece I I always always worry about is I kind of should I be doing something else right now? Um, Aaron's asking a question about printers stuck on printers for the A plus. Um, you know, it, it, they, we always say it's a smaller section of the exam. It's really not that small. What is the the printers section now? It's it's uh, significant. Uh, if I go to my eight oh it's eight oh eight oh two isn't it? No, it's eight oh one. So 801, an entire section on printers, um, and it's 11% of the exam. And you think that's not much until you get four printer questions and you don't know any of them. Um, that's that's really the challenge, is printer questions can really get you. Um, and you might want to get those back. Uh, printers, printers are also, I think the big chunk of them in the exam is just understanding the printer type. So that part's not so hard. This is a laser printer. This is an impact printer. This is a, a those types of printer types. You have to understand what they are and the pluses and, and minuses, the advantages and disadvantages of all of them. The troubleshooting printers, completely different thing. And a lot of the troubleshooting printers is in the troubleshooting section of the A-plus exam. That's the one that you're going to get a lot of questions, I think, that you won't know about. And, and it may be that you can, yeah, I, those are ones that are kind of easy to know, though. Uh, they ask questions if a streak is down the the display or the the print comes out and it's smearing. You know, where's the problem? Um, get some good questions and answers about those. Because to me, I think printers are probably the easier part of the exam. They're always the same way every time. We always have problems with printers. But if you can figure out the way a printer is working and fix the thing associated with it, um, it's it's pretty useful to have that. Yeah, the printing process, is the laser printing process. You have that process of the entire circle that goes around the laser printer. Um, it's just kind of a, kind of a challenge, isn't it? Um, memorizing all of those things. It's really memorization, rote memorization for the printer's part. So I, I wish I had more, 
more ideas for you other than that, other than grab your printer, open it up, look at all the different things that are inside of it. Uh, if you don't have a laser printer, go to an office supply store. Go to the Office Max Office Depot, Staples of your world, and open one up. Look at all oh, this is the this look. I can find the drum, the photosensitive drums inside of it, and here's the all the toner and the printer. The paper comes out; it's hot, and you can feel where the the fuser has fused those, and it kind of solidifies in your mind the way that those things work. Very very useful in that. Let's. Uh, I can probably give you a couple of questions that came in um, for these before my voice goes out. So we're already at one thirty. Um, you know, another one's ports. People ask a lot about port numbers, memorizing port numbers. How can I know port numbers better? What can I use to memorize port numbers? It's not a good way to memorize port numbers. It's just not. Um, there's not a good way to memorize port numbers. You just have to memorize them. A lot of the exam is memorization. But what I will say is that you actually use these things. You know, when somebody says, I need to configure the firewall, uh, we need to restrict Telnet. No more Telnet onto the subnet. Okay, well, what port number do I use for that? You have to know what numbers those are, especially if you're looking through the page that has 250 firewall rules on it and you're looking for the one you want. I guess you could go Google something, but now you're wasting time. You know, you need to know these things instantly whenever you're working with devices like that. Very, very useful. Um, a good part um, that's useful to know for your A-plus exam is that it is a one where you can mark the questions and then go back to them later. So you may want to go through, and this is what I do, is I go through the entire exam. Uh, on these on these exams that that are not, are not linear, there's some exams that require that you go you go to this question, you answer it, you can't go back. the The A plus fortunately is not one of those. You can go all the way through the exam, you can jump around to any question, you can go backwards, you can go forwards, you can do whatever you'd like. So what I do is I go to a question and I I look at the question, and if I just started the exam, I have to read it five times because I'm already nervous that I'm sitting down to take an exam. What if I blow it? And if I fail this, I got to take it. In. When am I going to take it again? Maybe next week. Well, the next week's not right. I'm going to have to push it out another couple of weeks. Well, that'll just be horrible. Then I'll forget every. I mean, I need to get through the first question. So the first, I've read it five times. Answer it like, okay, I know that one cold. This is absolutely the right answer. I know that one's good. I don't even have to look at this one ever again. There's the answer. I go to the next one. If the next one I get to, I'm like, well, I, it could be one of these. It could be A. It could be C. I think it's A. I'm going to mark A, but I'm also going to choose the mark the question option on my screen. I'm going to pull a check mark that says mark this one. And then I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I know that 100%. Anyone that I don't know 100%, I mean like 99%, I'm still marking it. That's just me. Um, you work however makes sense for, for your time frames. But I mark everything I'm not 100%. At the end of the exam, it shows you a list of all the questions and which ones you've marked. And you can now go back to each individual question with the mark button next to it and see, is that right? Yeah, okay, we can take the mark off of that one. Often you go through the entire exam and a later question jogs your memory about an earlier question. And if you've marked it, you will eventually get back to that earlier question that you were not 100% on. And you say, oh yeah, I remember. They asked that other thing earlier. Now I know that's absolutely 100%. So use those techniques to go back and forth over your exam to be able to work with those. I think that's... And the skill of taking the exam is an important part of that as well. Okay, another question from the the ones that were sent in this week, and then we'll we will finish it up in the chat room. If you got another question, this would be the time for the question. Um, a lot of folks were asking about Windows Seven. Is Windows Seven on it now? Yep, it's been on it for two years, three years now. Uh, there's absolutely Windows Seven on the exam. Um, This is an interesting one. Let me see if I can find the one I'm thinking about. Oh, one, one of the things I mentioned that uh, that in countries that's not speaking English, you can still take the 700 series. There was uh, some folks that are stationed overseas. They're, they're United States citizens. They're in the military. Uh, but they're stationed in countries that's not English-speaking countries. They can still take the 700 series um, in, in those countries, uh, which I thought was interesting. Um, there was even a, a case where they were in a country. I'm not sure this was legit or not, but you get extra time if it is a language that's different 
than what's normal in that country. Um, for instance, they took an English speaking course in Germany. They got more time in the English. I didn't think that was correct or not, but I thought that was interesting. But uh, depending on where you are in the world may affect what you're able to do with your exam. If you know another language that may be able to affect what you're able to do with your exams. Um, I think that's a good, good mix for what we were doing on here. Okay. Well, next week will be the um, oh, a question in the chat room, Windows 8. You know, that's really the question. Any ETA? I have no idea. I don't, I'm not CompTIA. I don't work with them. I don't talk to them. They don't talk to me. Um, I don't have a, a professional relationship with them. I, I do talk to them. You know, I'll see them at shows and that kind of thing. But they don't call me and say, hey, James, Windows 8's coming. Um, I would imagine some of the CompTIA, you'll start to see it pop up from uh, from some of the CompTIA um, associated folks that are out there if it ever happens. But keep this in mind. Here's what happened with Windows 7. So the 700 series exam came out, what, three years ago? Just over? So that 700 series exam came out and it had on it Windows 2000, Windows XP, and Windows Vista. Even though Windows 7 was recently released, Windows 7 was not on the 700 series exam. Then like a year later is, is they did not change the numbering of the exam. It's still a 701 and 702, but they changed the topics. They changed the objectives. So they changed and added Windows 7. They added IPv6. They changed some other things in there as well. But they added some brand new topics to the exam, including Windows 7, which is a pretty significant addition, and didn't change the exam numbers. Now, I noticed on the latest exam objectives, I don't know if I still have these up on my screen, is they've started using version numbers at the bottom of the exam objectives. And I think they've had to do that because you've had people now that are saying, I downloaded the objectives, it wasn't in there, and I got to my exam and it was in there, and you're saying, I failed it. Well, they're saying you didn't get the latest version of the objectives because they're not going to change the number. So I would, getting back to your original question, I would expect uh, Windows 8, which, which uh, to, to, the, to the disdain of some people in the chat room, apparently, Windows 8 is becoming very, very popular. It's actually a pretty nice operating system from an administrative perspective. It's a really nice operating system. There's some great things on the back end that have been added to Windows 8. And really, other than the desktop, there's nothing wrong with Windows 8. And I would argue desktop's not really a problem either. You just haven't used it. You haven't gotten used to it. You don't know how it works. It's Everybody else says it's bad. It must be bad. Um, it's actually a pretty nice operating system. Um, but but uh, there is, there is everybody has to hate something um, about something. It has to get in the news. The news isn't going to report it unless we hate it. Uh, I hate this. iOS 7 came out. It's a perfectly fine operating system. It works fine on my iOS device. But this week, you'd think that Apple's had completely lost it. This is this is horrible. It works fine. It's an it's an operating system, people. That's that's it's not that big a deal. Uh, I completely expect they'll be adding Windows 8 to it, um, and I would expect they'll probably do the same thing. They're gonna slipstream it in there. It'll still be the 801 and 802. It'll just have new topics on there. When that happens, you can believe I'm tweeting it, I'm Facebooking it, I'm Google Plusing it. It's on my website. I'm making videos about it. All those things. But that's that's why. Yeah, a lot of people want Windows 8 experience. People are jumping and going right to Windows 8 in some of these environments. They're very, very useful uh, to have that there. And uh, and they may add things like M.A. Graham says in the chat room, maybe they're going to add now the the new BIOS configurations for the, the UEFI. Um, it's already part of the Linux Plus certification. Why not add it to the A Plus as well? So very, very useful to, to have that there. Okay, well, that covers things here. I'm going to go out and get some lunch with one of my sons. We're going to go out and go to Five Guys. It's now becoming a tradition after a study group to go do that. Um, I think there's a, uh, we went for an hour and 39 minutes this time. I keep saying every month, I'm going to shorten this down. We never seem to be able to, but we're going to close it up right now. Thanks everyone for uh, joining us live. A lot of the great parts of this study group come because you're providing me with the questions. You're there in the chat room correcting me. You're asking me the questions that we can all talk about. For the folks that called in on the phone line, thanks. That was awesome. I love these phone calls. I think I might just do one study group where I'm not even going to answer questions unless you call 
Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do something like that. I just start answering questions from the phone line. That would be no prep. I'd be able to do one every day if we did something like that. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks.